Hello everyone, welcome to session three of LTEC 782, Design-Based Research and Education. Starting this week, things are going to feel a bit different. So far, our journey into the realm of design-based research has been more or less a whole group activity. Together, we've learned about the methodological positioning of DBR, all the different names design research goes by, and we've also learned about its features, theoretical and practical outputs, and most recently, we've thought about the process of conducting successful design-based research. As we enter week three, we're going to shift away from this lockstep whole group cadence into a more agile and personalized approach. The reason for this shift is to help ensure that you get the most out of this short six-week semester. From here on out, everyone is going to be focusing on his or her own DBR proposal. Of course, you won't be alone during this process. We'll be forming critical friends groups so we can lean on each other along the way. So with all of this in mind, what I want to do in the next few minutes is map out the next four weeks of the semester. My hope is this will get you excited about what's to come while also helping you plan ahead and focus in on the main deliverable of the course, which is a written DBR proposal. The purpose of the DBR proposal is for you as an individual researcher to advance a design-based research study that's aligned with your personal research interests. Now, we're not actually going to implement these proposals. There simply isn't enough time to conduct that kind of iterative field-based work. That said, we're going to act as if we were actually preparing a design-based research project. And to be clear, all that work and planning will be documented in your DBR proposals. So before we get into specifics about the proposal itself, let's take a look at the calendar. Of course, with this video, we're entering session three, which means there are four more sessions in front of us. If you're watching this video, that means you've already been into Canvas and you've seen that the DBR proposal assignment has been assigned as of today. That assignment is going to be due on Tuesday, July 5th. Now, take a look at session six. The last day of summer one instruction is Friday, July 1st. However, because that is such a short week, I'm giving you an extra weekend to work so that you can hand in your DBR proposal on Tuesday, July 5th, if you want. I will begin reviewing and grading your work starting the morning of Tuesday, July 5th. Now, let's talk a little bit about the requirements for the DBR proposal. Your DBR proposal needs to have eight sections, and you can see them listed here background and problem statement, purpose, aims, and scope, a lit review, theoretical framework, research questions, research goals and approach, methods, and a relevance section. Please don't panic if that seems like a lot. I'm not asking you to write another dissertation here. Instead, I'm putting constraints in place to help keep things manageable. These eight requirements need to fit into about eight to 10 pages double-spaced. In other words, this is a pretty short paper, and if you went with eight pages, you would have one page per section. Of course, some sections will be longer than others, and that's really going to be up to you, your writing style, and the nature of your project. Now, that eight to 10 page limit excludes a title page, abstract, references, and appendices. I do ask that the DBR proposal follow APA style, seventh edition, and of course, it needs to leverage the course readings as well as personalized empirical and methodological articles. Overall, you're going to be graded on the quality and completeness of these eight components of your proposal. And in addition, the quality of your writing will be important and will be assessed in terms of tone, clarity, coherence, use of references, as well as mechanics. Now, let's talk a little bit more about how we're going to get from A to B. This Sunday is Critical Reflection 3, which is titled, What's Your Problem? I'm going to talk more about Critical Reflection 3 in a minute, but the whole focus of that assignment is to get everyone to begin specifying the problem they want to address through DBR. Critical Reflection 3 is due Sunday because I want you to go immediately into scheduling your first Critical Friends meeting for next week. That first Critical Friends meeting should happen sometime during Session 4, or between Wednesday, June 15th, and Tuesday, June 21st. 
So let me talk a little bit about the critical friends meetings. Because we are a class of seven, we're going to create two groups, one group of three and one group of four. As a critical friend group, you need to schedule synchronous meetings that are a minimum of 90 minutes. The idea is to give each person in the group 20 to 30 minutes to introduce their educational problem and eventually their DBR ideas to address that problem, while of course leaving enough time to get feedback from everyone. Honestly, I would recommend closer to two hours, especially for the group of four, if at all possible, as that will give you a lot more time. The goal is to do a deep dive into each DBR project and to help each other explore, confirm, and refine your project problem and proposed design solution from week to week. Now, after that first critical friend meeting, you will need to submit your fourth critical reflection which is simply going to be a progress report on what you've accomplished related to your proposal. That whole process will repeat again in session five. You'll schedule a second critical friends meeting and then submit another critical reflection in the form of a progress report. And that will be due on Tuesday, June 28th. And then in session six, our focus will be on finalizing the DBR proposals. So that's an overview of the next four weeks. I'll be assigning specific readings each week to help you move through this process of creating your proposal. For this week, with Critical Reflection 3, we're going to let the analysis process begin. And as you can see here, we'll be focusing on the main activities of the analysis and exploration phase articulated by McKinney and Reeves. Think of this as an initial orientation where we each examine a problem, a specific context, and a group of stakeholders. Finally, I want to connect this work to Easter Day's design argument template, which we talked about briefly last week. We can see here there are a lot of variables we need to plug into this template to form a design argument. For now, we're going to focus on variables Y and Z. Essentially, if you want to design intervention X, and keep in mind we don't know what intervention X is going to be or what it's going to look like yet, and that's okay. But if we want to eventually design intervention X, we need to know purpose Y and we need to specify context Z. So in other words, we're starting the process by focusing on the purpose of this intervention. What problem are we trying to solve? What are we trying to accomplish? Note that this should be directly related to your soon-to-be-specified problem. In addition, we want to design a solution to that problem, so we need to focus on context Z, the space in which we want intervention X to eventually succeed. At this point in the process, we're not focused on a solution, an educational intervention. Instead, our focus is on understanding the problem at hand, ideally with a clear problem definition. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.